up everyone? All right, well today is Friday and I'm finishing the week with another green day. So five green days in a row in my main trading account, which is terrific. It's exactly what the doctor ordered. So after uh, a red day on Friday, last Friday, a week ago today, um, I, you know, that was disappointing because I'd had uh, a little two small green days, then a red day, then a tiny green day, and then a huge red day. And so I was red on the month. So five green days in a row, almost $60,000 in profit. Not bad at all. And just like that, I have gone from red on the month to green on the month, and I'm heading towards my $100,000 goal for the month of August. Yeah, I guess I'm still a little ways away from it, but hey, we're only halfway through the month, and this week we saw some great momentum. So if we see a continuation of what we saw this week into next week, then $100,000 should be well within reach. So $12,000 of profit today, only traded SPRT. It was um, seemed like the most obvious stock. I did pretty well on it. I could have been a little more aggressive, but you know, I got green and shut it down and shut it down early so as to not get tempted to go back for additional trades and risk giving back profit. So five green days in a row, I feel really good about that. It's a huge confidence booster. And I'll be back at it on Monday, looking for some more momentum. And today I, I was a little more aggressive. We didn't have, have as much um, sort of parabolic momentum on SPRT, but we got some good action, which was great to see. So that's, that's great for a Friday in August. It's a hot day, it's gonna be a hot weekend. So go try to relax, enjoy it, rest up, try to feel better. I've had this cold for a couple weeks now, but um, it was sort of its worst on Monday and Tuesday and it seemed to be getting a little bit better now. So anyways, that's it for me. Going into the weekend here, um, feeling good. So please hit that thumbs up. As always, in case you already know, trading is risky. Most beginner traders lose money. You should assume that you will also lose money. And with that assumption in mind, trade in a simulator before you put real money on the line. My results are not typical. All right, enjoy the recap. I'll see you on Monday morning. All right, so I'm gonna do a recap before I get uh, tempted into taking a trade on ACY and then giving back my whole morning of profit. Um, the problem with ACY is that the volume is just so light on it, uh, but you know, it kind of, it keeps bursting a little higher, but then it pulls back. It bursts a little higher than it pulls back. And you know, it's gone from like $32 to 36, but it's hard to trade. I, you know, I tried it yesterday and I lost on it. Um, so anyways, uh, TIRX is another one that I'm trying to restrain myself on. It, it looks, you know, nice five minute setup, but eh, it's a Chinese stock and I'm a little nervous about trading Chinese stocks right now because of the issues that uh, some of the political and regulatory issues that uh, some of the Chinese companies have been facing. I just feel like they're a short magnet, a target for short sellers, and I just don't want to mess with that. So <clears throat> uh, SPRT. Traded one stock today in the big account and traded it aggressively and traded it fairly well. Could have been a little better, but fairly well. Um, so I started pre-market on it. Initially, I'll say that I was pretty biased on it. I traded it during this move up on the daily chart, you know, a couple of weeks ago when it went from five to 10. The whole time it was hard to trade. You know, I just didn't trade it well. And I was kind of like, you know what? I, when I saw it popping up today, I was like, I don't know. I don't think this one's going to be easy. Um, and it goes to 9.35. And I was kind of watching it here. And I was like, I don't know. I don't think it's going to give a big breakout. It ends up ripping from 9.35 up to 9.78. And then I was like, well, all right. So it, it did that move. Okay, okay. So I guess it's starting to open up. And I'll just go back to that time on the 10-second chart. Because um, we had this... Um, kind of long period of consolidation here. And then it hit first 10.61 and it did a <clears throat> micro pullback right here. And I was sort of like, all right, you know, first micro pullback and then it goes up there to 10.79 and then a micro pullback. And so I finally got in. I finally just said, you know what, I'm in. It was in this area here. I said, fine, I'm just gonna take a stab. And then from there, I just started actively trading it through this move. And I was trading it with between, um, for, mo for most positions, between 15 and 25,000 shares. I felt comfortable taking lar larger size on this one than I have in uh, some of the past trades this week. The spreads were tight. The volume was pretty good. 
and it was moving pretty quickly. So I got some nice trades on it. And we got this nice move from 1011 up to 1050, pulled back at the open, it sells off. I was up uh, 10,000 on it, then gave back about, uh, about 1,000. I was up, I think, 9,300. And, th and that was giving back some profit on these dips, trying to buy dips, but they weren't bouncing. And then we got this um, nice red to green move. I took a trade on that move in my small account, which was at a sacrifice of getting that same trade in a big account. Um, made like 100 bucks in the small account on it, which could have been you know, three or 4,000 in the big account. But then in the big account, I did take the trade right through here and up to there. Uh, and I took one more trade on this micro pullback right there. And then that was, uh, I think, one of the last trades of the day. Uh, I might have done a dip trade. I think I did a bounce. Yeah, I did a bounce trade off of um, 10.50 on a pullback. It came back up to a high of like 10.60 or something like that. But anyways, it was somewhere in this area. And that, that was my last trade. So um, $12,000. So now this week, um, let's see. And I don't remember. I, I kept kind of trying to remember how much I'd made on Monday. And I couldn't quite remember. So let's go and actually check. Um, so this month, um, well, actually, what I can do, I can just go ahead and import. Why don't I just import my trades for the month? And we'll just see where, where I'm at. So um, let's see. All right, so I got to go from the first. I don't think I've done any imports here for the month of <clears throat> August. But maybe I'm wrong. Let's just check. Okay, so I'm in. I'll adjust the screen share in just a second. So here we go. All right, and reports. Okay, so my last import was the 29th. Uh, okay, so I gotta import the 30th. All right, and then I'll be then I'll be good. So I'll just do a little switcheroo here and I'll hide my chart. Okay, so Let's go from the 30th of July through yesterday. And I'll import those. I don't remember if I have any trades in my retirement account during that period, but I'll check that in a second. So I ended up having, uh, all in all, a pretty decent week. It started slow, uh, but picked up a bit. Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, and Thursday, as you know, and, and here on Friday. Yesterday was my biggest day of the week uh, at 22,000, I think it was. Today was a little slower at um, 12,000, but um, that's okay. So let's see. I'm thinking I'm up about 60,000 on the week right now, but I need to see where I finished the month um, or where I finished uh, on Monday. Okay, and I'm just going to check my retirement account and see if I had any trades in there. I might have traded in the retirement on Friday, um, the 30th. So let's just check. All right, so we'll go back on this one to the 30th. All right. Looks like there's a couple trades to import. All right, so we'll get those imported as well. All right, so let me refresh this. Um, Okay, so yeah, so about two thousand dollars there, uh, which is about what I thought. So you know, the bummer, of course, of last week was that Friday. Um, I certainly could have done without that, but that's that's trading for you. In case you didn't already know, trading is risky. Most beginner traders lose money. In fact, most uh, traders who've been doing it for a while still lose money. So you should assume you will lose. And with that assumption in mind, trade in a simulator before you put real money on the line. I wish I had done that when I was getting started. All right, so I'll refresh this one more time. Okay, so um, did I take that Friday off? Maybe I took that Friday off. Now I'm trying to remember. I don't see any trades there. Does anyone remember? Did I take the last Friday of the month off? I think I did. Anyways, all right, well, that's fine. So, uh, so for August, yeah, so this is where I sit. That's right. Okay, so I was right on that thing. All right, so let's look at the equity curve for the month of August. 
All right, so we're going to go here um, to win loss expectation. Oops, I've got to type this in for August 1st. All right, so for August 1st, um, or, or as of August 1st, so I went up at the most 10,000 on the month before going into the red by 29,000. And now I'm back to up 21,000 on the month. But of course, that's before today. So now I'll be up about 30,000, which is good. It's not bad. I mean, I said my goal was uh, to try to hit 100K. Uh, that's the first target. So I'm at 30 right now. And of course, it's um, halfway through the month. So if I do 15, uh, 30 next week and 30 the week after, that'll put me up uh, over right around 100. So that's that's realistic, especially since I had such a good stretch here this week. My um, profit loss ratio is terrible. And that's what happens when you have one huge loss. It screws up your, your ratio. So my average winner is almost half my average loser. It's not good. Uh, unfortunately, that's August trading for you. You get too aggressive on the wrong stock and that's what happens. Accuracy is decent and of course I've had some nice winners. So yes, that's where I finished there. And then relative to, um, to July, if we go back here a little further, sitting at about 289,000. Um, you can see I've still I've still got a little ways to go. You know, I, I lost some money at the end of July there. I was up here at 388, pulled back. So, and unfortunately dug the hole even deeper when I had that $30,000 loss. So I'm glad that I've got a hundred and, uh, or I'm glad that I've got $60,000 or so of recovery here off the low, but I've still got, um, still got a ways to go to really get myself back to the peak of where I was in, in July. And you know, that, that's, that may not happen this month. This whole month may end up being me slowly digging myself out of the losses from, um, you know, from earlier in the, uh, in the summer, but at least I'm doing it well into the green. we we'll go back to the beginning of the year. This is kind of where I sit right now. So just in a little bit of a lull here, you know, a little dip down, curling back up off those lows. It was my tied for the second biggest drawdown of the year. Both of those were about 150. This one was over 300. But I think if you, you have to think of things in sort of a relative manner that I probably trade about 10 times more aggressively than uh maybe your average trader, even an average trader who's been doing it for a while. So this might be like a $30,000 drawdown for a more typical trader. This might be a you know, $15,000 drawdown. For me, it's 150, it's 300. And for the guy who's 10 times bigger than me, it's 1.5 million, it's 3 million. It might even be 15 million or 30 million. There's people even bigger than me. I'm not the biggest by any, not even close. So it's all relative. Someone you know, who's bigger than me would Oh, yeah, I'm down like 15 million in the last um, three months or last three weeks, but, you know, made uh, 600,000 this week and I'm on a good stretch moving back, right? You could, that, that could be a sentence that would come out of someone's mouth. Not me, but someone out there. So you kind of have to take it with a grain of salt whenever I'm talking about my profits. Uh, this is coming from someone who's been doing this for a long time, um, has a risk tolerance that's higher than most. And you know, I can lose that amount like I did in January and recover within a few weeks. So you try to keep it relative when you're thinking about the profit loss and stuff like that. If you're trading with 100 shares, obviously your your profits will be substantially smaller and, the, and losses will hopefully as well, substantially smaller. So anyways, that gives me kind of a little bit of a mid-month uh, check-in here of where I'm at. And if I just focus on the month of August, yeah, I can look at the glasses being half full. At least I'm green on the month after today. And, um, you know, 31,000, 32,000 after today, once once I add today's profit. So that's good. I don't like having one big loss there, but um, hopefully by the end of the month, I'll have one or two big winners that are, um, that are you know, a little bit bigger than that 30,000. And I'll finish the month up around 100. And, and if I do... Then let's see. I will be well. I'm at 2.6 in gross uh, right now, but 
ticket overview and then month and year. So yeah, kind of in had a really nice June. July was tied at June before that last week when I lost a hundred grand. So I was feeling pretty good. I was thinking July might be able to push back up to these levels of 400, but then flew too close to the sun and gave back a hundred. And now, unfortunately in August, I've had to really button up and be like very tight with how I manage risk. So I don't have a you know continuation of those losses. So August is smaller, April was smaller. And then, you know, there's a month there that was, that was crazy big. If we look at uh, last year, just for reference, last year, uh, 2020, I was, I was struggling at the beginning of the year, 12,000, 75, 20, 92, 225, all of a sudden momentum picked up and then it slowed down a little bit, then it picked up again. And then I had a month where I was actually red after commissions there in November. And then, the, so how is it possible? 800 red and then 750. Let's do net so you can actually see how it was red. Um, so one month of 700, then a red month, and then 700 the next month, 650. It's the ebb and flow of the market. You know, that was sort of a tide of momentum rolling in, captured some great profit, and then it kind of pulled back. I didn't adjust. I traded too aggressively, got red, and then rode that next wave up. So a better uh, trader in that same month might have been able to just have a small green month, maybe like this, and not be so aggressive that it resulted in going red, but it's just the way it goes. You can see that my trade distribution increased last year, went, went dipped down during August and September and October, and then increased again going into the winter. Uh, here, I can't I continue to be really, really aggressive and then taper down as I have a slow April and have now kind of come back down a little bit more. So waiting for the big momentum to come back and then I'm going to step up to the plate and get aggressive again. So anyways, that's my mid-month uh, review here and I will see you guys uh, back at it tomorrow, uh, Monday morning. Enjoy the weekend. I, I'm hoping by Monday I'm 100% better. I'm feeling a little bit better, but hopefully by Monday I'm, I'm all better and can get the second half of the month off to a good start. All right, thanks for tuning in. I'll see you guys on Monday morning. I hope you really enjoyed that video and make sure you hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Our goal is to hit 1 million subscribers this year, but we won't get there without your help. So please, please, please hit that subscribe button.